How you doing? Marcus Conti, former sanitation enforcement agent. I want to do a little bit of a video here on some of the progress that I've made. People keep asking me, did you report it? Did you report your story? Did you tell the, the authorities? Blah, blah, blah. Yes, I did. So we're going to look, run through some of, the, um, some of the names and the faces involved in this thing. And uh, the first slide, oh, this is going to be a slideshow. So the first slide you're seeing is, uh, this is from the, this is me sending an email to the Department of Sanitation. If I botch their names, you could read it for yourself. It's Shannon Manigault. She is the Inspector General at 80 Ma uh, Maiden Lane, New York, New York. There's a phone number. And this is me first sending a email out to, uh, I had reached out earlier probably by phone. I, I reached out to everybody. But this is a formal um, letter that I had sent uh, requesting that she, you know, censure in some way Bill de Blasio and Catherine Garcia that they've uh, pretty much abandoned their job here. Okay, so the next one is the follow-up. This is um, Daniel Flaherty. Daniel Flaherty, okay? He's um, the good uh, Inspector General's uh, foot soldier at the Department of Investigations. He reached out to me. I would like to discuss your complaint further and obtain some additional information. Here's my phone number. That occurred on February 14. And then uh, I didn't hear anything from him for a while. And then, boom, ABC. Holy smokes, ABC reports the quota. And then he reaches out again and he says that I received your audio tapes. I watched the ABC report. I saw in this most recent email that you provided the court a thumbnail. All right, so he's reaching out. He's trying to get his hands on some, some, some information, as a good investigator will do. But uh, in, the, in the final analysis, uh, this individual actually never did anything. It seems like he investigated me. Down in the bottom, you see some of the key email addresses. Uh, the lawyers over at the uh, Department of uh, at the Corporate Council, the Army of Lawyers, and uh, you see the Depart New York State Division of Human Rights lawyers. Okay. All right. So this next slide, um, he this is another email, and. Um, he, so he's asking basically for more information about the 10 ticket quota and the the, um, the practice of block facing agents who underperform. So he's he's he seems concerned. He seems interested, and he keeps asking me throughout these discussions. I had a few phone conversations with him, so I'm not going to put those up. But he he um, he sends um, keeps asking me to come into the office to 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 tell, talk more, like as if. What I'm saying isn't enough. Isn't enough to knock the door down and, you know, start handcuffing people. But uh, okay, apparently, you know, these guys kind of want to. I it, almost I I got the whole sense when I was talking to this guy that he was kind of investigating me for reaching out. Okay, so you can I, I only put this I only put this stuff up. You can reach out to these individuals if you want on your own. Uh, I didn't have much of a, uh, much of a good response. Uh, by doing so. Okay, so now I'm going to put this next slide up. This is from Ibrahim Khan. This is a big guy. This is the chief of staff for the office of New York City Public Advocate, Latisha James, down on Center Street. Okay, so this is the chief of staff for the public advocate who is one step, a heartbeat away from the mayor. Okay, if the mayor resigns or resigns in scandal, which most of them do. Uh, Letitia James is your new mayor. So here here I am again reaching out to see if there's any response from the mayor or the commissioner because I had reached out to this um, office a while back and I'm just trying to follow up and he's like, we're still looking into it. See the top line? His answer, March 1st, 2017 at 11.55 a.m. Ibrahim Khan, quote, we're still looking into it. Take your time, Ibrahim. Take your time. All right, now I'm going to flash some faces. Um, I want to put some faces to some of the people involved. This first uh, guy right here, this is 
uh, Mr. Greenwood, he was, he since got canned or left or whatever from the Division of Human, uh, Department of Sanitation. He was the, he was one of the three trainers at, um, at uh, Floyd Bennett Field. Uh, he was my trainer. So at that training session, there was a captain. There was him. He was the captain. Then there was Pascal, who at the time was lieutenant. And another individual, his name is Greenwood. So this was the, uh, this was basically uh, ringleader number one uh, out of Floyd Bennett Field. He was wholly responsible for uh, Pascal's actions. He's the captain. He should have known better. This is the class. You see him up front. All right, I'm in the back row there. Okay, so Mr. Greenwood right up front, front row, front and center. Got his gold stripe on his hat. This is Mr. Peppy, Mr. Peppy, Mr. Peppy. What have you done to yourself? So Mr. Peppy also got mysteriously disappeared a week after he screamed in my face and I reported him to EEO. He was gone. They say he retired. Who knows? I wasn't invited to his retirement party. <laughs> This is Amoskita. This is Mr. Quote, Lieutenant Amoskita. He is the number one attack dog for Pascal. Okay, he's wholly responsible for forcing the agents, forcing the supervisors below him, uh, Dumphy, Concepcion, Hampton, and Fleetwood. He has full control over those individuals. They're all the people that signed all the documents. This guy is the guy who lied on the, um, he lied to EEO uh, investigators saying that there was no quota. Okay. This is Klingler. This is the Chief Klingler. Apparently, allegedly, he's the guy in charge of the entire enforcement division. I've never, I've never seen him on the property. Um, my experience was only to see his name on defamatory statements uh, in the end regarding me so he's um, apparently he's one above the captains he's above Burke who's the deputy chief right so Burke answers to this guy who Klingler answers to her this is uh, Catherine Garcia she is the commissioner of the Department of Sanitation she has been completely silent on this issue, still flatly denies, at least publicly, that there is a quota. And this is the, this is the, um, the mouthpiece for the Department of Sanitation. This is Vito Terso. Vito Terso is the DSNY public affairs representative. And he's the guy who goes out in front of the cameras and says that the Department of Sanitation does not have a ticket quota never imposes any um, punishment on agents who fail to meet a ticket quota. This is, uh, this is uh, basically, you know, the liar number one who goes out in front of the cameras and lies to the public, defrauds the public. Oh, who's this? It's the Black Mafia. That's the, this guy became the president, if you can imagine, Donald Trump. Leader of the Black Mafia. Oh, this is an interesting one. This is what happens to you at DSNY enforcement if you fail to follow the corruption. They, <laughs> they set you up for the kill. They basically set you up for the kill, like in Serpico, where he sticks his head in the door and, and, and they're supposed to run in behind him and knock the door open. Instead, they leave him there to get shot in the face. And we're going to be very polite on this one. This is the Honorable... The very honorable Judge Barbara Jaffe, who made the decision at 60 Center Street that there was no corruption at the SNY, that there was no discrimination or retaliation. She agreed 100% with the New York State Division of Human Rights' decision to find no probable cause for anything. Okay, so. We're basically, what, what this case is basically about, and that's the slideshow, so what, what this case is basically about, now that you've seen some of the players, 
I, I like to put a face to some of, of what's going on instead of it just being me mentioning these people is that we're now in the we're now in the in the uh, appeals process where the object is Jaffe and Judge Jaffe and the New York State Division of Human Rights have both decided that there's no there's they, they don't even mention the quota right at all and they don't refuse to mention discrimination of course because of obvious reasons that I'm not I'm not a minority so therefore in their eyes I guess discrimination isn't even possible right so uh, so and you and if you're reading through the brief I want to mention one other thing you're gonna see things it's very complicated I get it I understand but you're going to see the object here is to overturn the decision of the New York State Division of Human Rights in what's called something called arbitrary and capricious. That their decision was arbitrary and capricious, and what meaning that they didn't investigate, which they didn't really do. So that's where we're at. Now you have some faces to the um, to the story, and um, if you know, again, I think that the best way to to uh, expose is to make confessional videos those are wonderful if you don't feel like you know putting your face in front of the camera then you can do it behind the camera just let us know who you are and um so that so that it's believable it's not just somebody making it up because then if it is then it's not it's not worth anything but um okay so now you have some faces if you feel like reaching out to some of those doi people as required by law uh, you know if you see corruption, you're supposed to report it. Now, while well, you you have seen corruption, and you're supposed to report it, but uh, again, I haven't had um, a very good result going down the conventional um, path. Okay, so thank you for listening.